Hi, everybody. I'm Susan Colon. I'm your health coach. And today we're going to be having a topic on emotional health. And this is your wellness boost. So in case you're not familiar with the health coach, I am someone that supports those that want to partner to have a healthy lifestyle. And I help remove obstacles that people can't seem to do on their own. I am your navigator, your partner, sitting in the passenger seat on your way to pursuing a happy and healthier lifestyle. So today's topic is your emotional and mental health. And this is a group coach and webinar style. So sit back, take a breath, take a moment to get in touch with all things going on with your mental state, your emotions, and you. We're gonna talk about stress and how to manage change during this special moment in time and history in the world in this short, fast-paced session. We're gonna collaborate a little bit on strategies and we're gonna think about and even commit to one small step toward wellness today. Because habits are made the same, both healthy and unhealthy, by re repeating actions until they become a pattern. So let's focus on small steps toward healthy ones today. Today's topic is emotional and mental wellness. We're going to lead with our strengths. We're going to manage change. We're going to learn from each other as much as we can, can on a webinar. And I'm even going to challenge you to, uh, I'm going to try that commitment. So are you ready? Wonderful. Let's move on. So I'm going to do a little bit of a poll, and it's about what are the things that keep you going? And I ask you to get a piece of paper out and take a moment and think about the things that keep you going. And I'd like you all to participate and just for yourself, get your phone out or actually if you're at your workstation, get a piece of paper. And I want you to think about the things that keep you going. So take a breath, let it out and think about the things that keep you going. Write it down. Small things count. A lot of people say family keeps you going. Just one or two things. Everybody, we want to write down one thing that keeps you going. And we're talking about science-based strategies here. And the reason we lead with strengths here in coaching is that we do this to promote positive thoughts and even empowerment. And we use this when we're coping with difficult situations. And we even use leading with strengths to highlight characteristics to know where we want to go. So once you have that thing that keeps you going, I want you to say it out loud. Family, friends, whatever keeps you going, your purpose in life, maybe it's work. All right, everyone have that? Wonderful. Let's move on. So today we're talking about stress and change and how we're going to manage that in this session. And change is something that brings about uncertainty, it's imperfect, it's unknown, and it really disrupts what we know, particularly this time in this moment in time in history. So one of the things that is helpful is to keep to rituals. Now you might have to find some new ones because they're not the ones we've had in the office or in our regular routine when we were a little bit more free. Your environment is different. So your schedule and your rituals might have to be. The important thing is to find a ritual that works in your environment because these keep us grounded. The second thing I want you to think about is quantifying your news intake. Some people find an abundance of news triggering for them and it's disturb disturbing. So we want to limit our intake of news. We also want to balance our news with good news. 
There's lots of kindness stories out there. And if you're going to monitor news, we want to balance that news intake with kindness stories, good news stories, so that we have an adequate uh, coming in for us as far as news goes. I also want you to remember that this is a contagious time for lots of things, including people and things that make us feel worse. So if you can limit yourself from the news triggers and people that may make us feel worse as well. We want to anchor ourselves in that calm. And one way to do that is validate our emotions, specifically name them, and then realize that we're experiencing some loss. How do we do that? A lot of people will say, I'm very stressed. Well, that's a big umbrella. We want to go a little deeper and realize if it's stress under what kind of emotion. Is it anxiety? Is it nervousness? What exactly can you validate in that emotion? Once you name it, you may be able to find a solution for that specific emotion at that specific time. And that leads to understanding that we're all grieving some kind of loss in this example. So, Let's move on to how we anchor ourselves in calm, experiment with calming activities as we manage ourselves through this stress. Now, they might not be the go-to ones you're used to because everything is a little changed right now. It's a little different. So those calming activities you may have counted on might not be doing the trick for you. So we need to experiment, we need to structure our day and our evenings in a way that we find calm, which leads to the next slide. So we're going to do a little bit of a poll here, keeping to what have you done, what have you tried. So ordinarily in group coaching, we collaborate and learn from each other and share the things that we've done to keep to a routine, how we've increased our calm, and where we are with emotional awareness for this particular webinar. So what I'm doing is I'm sharing ideas that other group collaborations have had, and I'm sharing them with you in the hopes that you may be able to try one of these. So I'm gonna go through nine in different categories. So get out your paper or phone and see if you will write some of these down and experiment with them. So the first one is staying connected. But I want you to stay connected with some intention. So the nostalgia of social technology may be wearing off for you. So intentionally finding a connected point for you on a daily basis is really what I'd like you to try for your emotional health. That is number one some intention or purpose to stay connected. Staying connected keeps us grounded and keeps us away from that sheer anxiety, keeps us off the precipice and keeps us emotionally healthy. Number two, Music has been helpful for lots of my clients, especially a live experience which might be a little challenging right now. So live stream music is wonderful for our emotional and mental well-being. You can find lots of these online. A live stream experience keeps us connected and music research shows keeps us mentally well and healthy. Number three, exercise, moving our body. Ideally outside if it's safe for you. And if you can't sum up the energy to get some exercise, moving your body in your house or apartment is also something that will help your emotional health. Whether you find some creative outlet in your apartment to walk around in some challenging um, path is a way to keep mentally physically and emotionally well. 
All right. Now, the next three are a category for your creative well being. And the first one is coloring, doing some art, or writing. Wonderful for our mental well being. If you don't have any talents in those areas, coloring, and you can find many examples of coloring books online to use, promotes peace and calm for your brain. This is something I encourage you to try. Yes, adult coloring books. You can look it up online. The next thing is gratitude. Research shows that if our brain acknowledges gratitude for our emotional health, this is something that can boost our mood. So I'm going to challenge you to the following. If you can come up with writing down one good thing every day, one good thing, this may bring you to layering your emotional well health with uh, getting to a better place by finding some gratitude. So this, the next thing in this category is slowing down our actions. You may have a little extra time right now. So slowing down our actions, being mindful of what we're doing, and even having some presence of mind to stay in a slower pace, see and check in with ourselves, and just being right there. The final three categories are really for our brain. And the first one is related to the last thing we just talked about, and that's stillness. You may be reading a lot about be productive, be active in this time. Well, I'm going to challenge you to take moments of stillness. This is wonderful for our mental wellness. Being still, recognizing where you're at, checking in with those emotions, validating them, naming them, knowing they'll pass is helpful for our mental well-being. The next one is being present. If you're in yourself doing a task, stay present with that task. It's, it is a challenging time to stay present with that task, but be present for that. Move on and be present for the next. And the final strategy I'd like you to consider is breathing. Breathing is a wonderful way for us to get emotionally healthy and well. And it's something that I'm going to ask you to do at the end of this session. So what have you tried to get yourself to calm? Our final slide is I'm going to challenge you to a what's your gonna try commitment for the week. Besides washing your hands and trying not to touch your face, what's one step you can take toward the school? Using a small steps approach. And consistency is more important than duration. What's one thing you can get better at this week? Whether it's some of the things we just talked about, or something you've learned from somebody else, a friend or a colleague or a family member, what's one thing you can incorporate into your weekly habit that will get you to a more emotionally healthy place? All right, we're gonna try the breathing technique here. It's called heart hold. I ask you to try it with me. You're gonna put your right hand over your heart and your left hand right above your belly button for your diaphragm. And we're gonna take some breaths in through our nose and out through our mouth, activating our parasympathetic nervous system so that we can activate the calm and peaceful part of our body and brain rather than the fight or flight part of our brain. And this is gonna take us to a calm place. You can do this anytime except when you're driving, and it should take you to a nice, calm place. So are you ready to try it with me? Thank you. So you may start anytime. So we're going to breathe in, and we're going to exhale 
longer than we, we're gonna exhale longer for exhale and shorter for inhale. I'll do the counting, are you ready? So inhale for two, one, two, exhale through your mouth, three, four, five, inhale, one, two, exhale, three, four, five, inhale through your nose, one, two, exhale through your mouth, three, four, five, last time, inhale, one, two, exhale through your mouth, three, four, five. How do you feel? I hope these strategies help you on your way to being more emotionally healthy. I'm Susan Cole and your health coach, be well.